Now, poor old Cobra, tucked away in the corner here at Four Golf Chester, but uh, it may be in the corner, but it's making plenty of noise at the moment, Cobra in general. Uh, I think from anything from irons through to wedges through to drivers, they're doing a real good job and getting some uh, real positive reviews and none more so than these drivers. And like I said, I'm late on the scene, but I'm going to review it. I'm going to give you an opinion of an average golfer. Um, we'll start off by saying this one grabs the attention in terms of looks, and that's where we'll start it. Get your opinions down below. How do you think this one looks? Yes, let's start with the look. You've seen plenty of pictures thrown up there for you and uh, your own opinion is the only one that really matters. But for me, I'll give you mine. It's kind of, I'm not a massive lover of the yellow and red of Cobra. That's, that's just a personal thing. I think it's quite striking. I think it's an attention grabber on the shelf. Is it really my cup of tea? No, it's probably not. I think there's a white and black version. I probably prefer the look of that. Underneath, um, we've got a weight system that can be swapped around again depending on what it is you're looking to achieve in terms of that club head forgiveness or, or lower spinning those kind of uh, compromises that you might look to make it does something quite different with this face as well um, it's kind of almost wrapped around the crown and also around the sole I'm going to see how it looks at a dress, like I said, but from what I'm looking at right now from the crown, it's a little bit different. It's something that, again, I would have to get my sort of head round a little bit. But the actual crown element itself, this sort of, again, gloss finish, muted carbon look underneath, which, again, so many drivers seem to have gone to. I actually seem to like this a lot better than the last year's model, but very much a personal opinion. That's all we need to know. You've heard tech spec from plenty of other people, because like I said, I'm late on the scene with this one. Switch cameras, hit some golf balls, collect some data, give you my opinion. See how this performs. Yeah, it's priced well, but does it perform well? We'll find out. Right, okay, so for purposes of the test, and so you understand the way I've got this set up, I've got the heavier weight of the two at the back end, a lower weight being at the front, and again, set up in terms of Bit of forgiveness, a bit of help, get that CG low back and uh, get that ball up and out there. That's the plan. Ten and a half degree head set at standard. And again, I've got a 10 side blue shaft. Now, the 10 side blue shaft is something if you forget, depending on which order of these videos come out, I've just tested um, the ST200 from Mizuno in. So, and it's again, it's a, it's, a, it's a shaft that I'm very comfortable with, one that I've used for many other tests as well. Talk about, first of all, at address. I have got an issue with that sort of um, the rolled over crown, the way the face rolls over the crown, because you've got a high gloss finish and then you've got a very much a matte finish, um, a matte graphite grey as opposed to a gloss black. I don't say that it's, um, I don't say that I don't like it, but it's very different. So it's something that I address very, very noticeable. And like I said, for me, I don't know. I'm not overly keen, that sort of say, but I think it's just a case of, uh, you know, getting your head around it, getting your head around the change. In terms of the shape of the crown itself, fairly traditional, looks a little bit stretched in the way that they've got these sort of two uh, cutouts either side, grooves, if you like, that just sort of raise that back end of the crown. And again, it looks okay, um, but not fantastic. I've got to say that, but let's get it in some golf balls. First thing I'm going to do is hit with range balls we'll then switch over to some proper balls for collecting data uh, but for the time being while i wax them into this rather wet field out there we'll start off with some range balls at the minute it's a bit of a struggle to collect these things well it's straight down the middle it's not a huge caddy but it wasn't the best of swings i think we'll uh We'll just ignore that one before I pass too much opinion because that wasn't the best, but it was straight. Maybe went a bit easier on that. That's better. I always pull a right face when I'm watching these shots go down there. I mean, to be honest with you, one of the interesting things is, and I've just tested it with the Mizuno, is that for me, Cobra always had an issue in terms of the, sound, the, the, the feel, which came from sound, because it was always a bit of a gunshot. And it was something that I never liked. 
from drivers of old and I suppose sometimes things stick and again very um, poor from uh, my part those things stick in your head and you always get to, you associate that with the driver for me this is a bit different it's a lot lot softer uh, straight away we're using range balls and like I said I'll confirm it with the uh, with the proper balls but it's a lot softer sound something they've done a real good job of in my opinion in this model and last year's um, but superb in terms of how it felt first ball was okay second ball very good one more on screen that's the ball a more balanced swing from me And that's a long carry that went that one was certainly out the middle and that's a huge carry in terms of distance we'll carry on like i said it in some golf balls um collect the data and we'll do an overall assessment the thing is like i said it's all right pricing a product at the cheaper end of the market but it's got to perform well let's see if that does that in the hands of the average golfer well, first of all, I've got to say I enjoyed it and that because I think uh, one of the massive ticks I will give it before we go into the detail of this is the sound and feel. I mentioned it briefly, but it was superb. And again, with a proper golf ball, even better. And that's a massive change for me. Uh, but let's just get straight into this data. That's all we're interested in. Um, what was interesting for me was uh, average club head speed, all very, very consistent across the board there. One dropped off, but around that 94 mile an hour mark. It's been a bit slower today, maybe a bit cold and stiff in here. Uh, and that's what you've got to bear in mind if you ever look back and compare other numbers. And I might do that briefly in a minute anyway. But ball speed again, look at that. This is the bit I'm liking about. Certainly, to be fair, drivers at the moment in general, but 143.8. But look across the board, barely a mile or two in terms of ball speed separating them. I always say the same thing. How many of them balls am I getting out the centre of that club face? It's probably not many, to be fair. I will be spreading it around a bit. You've seen my swing. There's variables in it. So for it to be achieving that ball speed consistently, to me, again, ticks the forgiveness box. And that's the only way I can look at it. Good spin number 2436, 233 overall carry. I'll just have a look at the launch. 12.7, there was one in there that flew a bit higher, but it was uh, it was, it was a good, um, for me, a ball flight that I kind of liked. Um, but I want to show you the, um, the dispersion because I sometimes forget to throw this screen up, but it was absolutely bang on. Um, I felt like I started hitting these golf balls, got into a position where I was warmed up and comfortable to start recording data. And I felt like I could basically strip it down the middle virtually every time at the sort of pylon in the distance, which is our aim from in here. So I think that was a massive tick in the box. It, I just couldn't seem to miss. But like I said, once you get a little bit of confidence going and your swing's in a bit of a groove, then yeah, I accept that could be the case. But overall assessment is one that I'll say just beforehand as well. Check out again. I'm not going to do it in the same video because I just did the Mizuno one. But if you look at the SIM numbers and you look at the Maverick numbers that I recorded um, a week or so ago, then you'll see there is very little to split these at all in terms of ball speeds. And what you'll see is when club head speed is the same, ball speed is pretty much the same. And like I said, pretty much across the board. Um, so the overall assessment is this. Yet again, another product. Let's We've we're, we're always got the downer on the brands that are pricing these very very high accepted but there's hit this we got the Mizuno product we had a Cleveland product the week before that are all pitching in at some much more realistic prices and I think for me wouldn't tick every box in terms of looks but in terms of performance hard to argue couple that with the price tag and yet again Cobra have got an un undoubted winner on their hands from 2020 and I think they'll uh, I think it's just hats off to Cobra they've been doing a fantastic job uh, last year and this and continue to do so so let's hope that carries on let's hope we keep seeing affordable product on the shelf that also performs very well because that's the all important bit anyway as ever thanks for watching i'm down at floor golf chester it's been another great day i'm going to carry on testing and uh, i'll see you all very soon